Hello and welcome to the Smart Women in Business vlog and podcast. Today I am talking to Fee Mims, a professional photographer for over 15 years. Fee is passionate about working with thought leaders, entrepreneurs and business owners to create images that amplify their personal brand and inspire others to work with them. Fee brings out the best in everyone she photographs, resulting in images that are authentic and beautiful. Through her membership community, Shine, Fee also works with driven women in business, helping them to show up consistently, build their brand and grow. Welcome, Fee, my Instagram friend. Thank you, Jane. And it's so great to meet you face to face, even though it's not well, in real life, but as good as it gets. I, I had you on my goals for last year. I was like, Fee oh. Mims, photo shoot, spring, COVID. Mm. Mm. Yeah. yeah it's like uh whenever i talk to people now and we always say when did we last catch up we're just like well it must have been 2019 <laughs> because awesome not much happened last year no, a lot of homeschooling a lot of homeschooling so obviously working photography been yes. quite an interesting year for you tell me about your overall business journey and what's led you to this point because i'm sure you had to do the pivot last year <laughs> Yeah, I did. well, yes, yes and no, I suppose. I did pivot a little bit last year. Uh, how far back do you want me to go? <laughs> well, to, well, I mean, there could be people, people listening to this who have an idea for a business. There are people who listen to this yeah. who are just in startup. And there are people who listen to this who are probably ready to give up. Yeah, okay. So. Well, I think what last year did do for me is spur me into action because as a photographer and anyone who works in a one-to-one -one service industry, we all know that you plateau at a certain point. And I had felt that for a number of years. And it doesn't mean we don't love what we do, but it's like, oh, I can't, I can't shoot anymore. Like I'm, I'm at my maximum capacity unless I just increase prices if I want to grow my business. And we don't always want to do that. So I have to say, to be honest, for years, years, I have been watching everyone online build courses and, you know, grow their business in those scalable ways through digital products. And I was very jealous of all of them <laughs> thinking I need to do this, but struggling to find the time in between, you know, I was still loving my shoots and keeping my own business going and, and growing that business as it is. So last year, um, I actually feel like I got a lot of silver linings out of that COVID mm. break. I know it was obviously nothing any of us wanted to go through, but um, I'd had an idea for an online membership for women to help them build their brand and grow their business, which you mentioned in my intro. Um, and it, it, I'd had the, been working on the idea for about 12 months. So having that break last year actually forced me to get it up online and make it happen, which it did. So oh, I think... I think it's, it's, I mean, what last year told us all is that we have to have um, options in our business, don't we? Mm. We have to have options so that, you know, no matter what gets thrown at us, we can survive. Hopefully yeah. we don't get another COVID thrown at us, but um, yeah. yes, it's, yeah. it's interesting. You were, you were productive in that break. Well, the break. Yeah. I was not. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, well, we all had to do what we had to do to survive. I think if you could just mm. take the break and enjoy the break, that's great. <laughs> I was homeschooling a preppy. Yeah, my so. kids, I've got twins in grade, well, grade six this year, grade five last year. So um, they were pretty self-sufficient. Like it was a yeah. bit of monitoring here and there, but um, I did have space to still work on my business, which was quite nice. Um, yeah, my yeah, oldest is just... with younger kids. Yeah, my my yeah. oldest in grade four, she was like, fine, I'll send her off. She's like, treat it like an office job. Turned up 8.45 every morning, worked away and then, you know, finished after lunch. But yeah, the preppy. That's oh, not... And that two yeah. days we had last week, I was like, let's not do this. Oh, it brought it all back, didn't it? So oh, quickly. I was like, oh, oh, stress levels peaking. I remember this. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yep. So, yeah. Oh, well, that, I mean... I, I call myself a relentless optimist. Like I, I always see the silver lining in every situation. Like, and I think in business that's resilience is one of the things mm. that we have to have. So absolutely. I think, um, yeah, resilience is pro you probably can't be a business owner without resilience. Can you? Because it's nothing ever always goes right. I mean, it's always about moving forward and back and highs and lows. It's, you're solving problems every day, um, you know, even when we love what we do, like things go wrong. Things go <laughs> things wrong. Things happen. <laughs> things happen. I mean, and, and things happen either in the execution or the client relationships. You know, there's a lot of relationship management that goes on yeah. and it's, it can be really, really challenging. 
Yeah, and even keeping on top of your own health and looking after yourself, you know, just having that resilience. <laughs> My husband was like, oh, how are you going? You know, with the, with the hit you said you were going to do, shh, 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 shh. <laughs> But yeah. They're only allowed to talk to th- about that when we want them to talk about it. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, don't just randomly bring it up. Gosh. Exactly. Your head bitten <laughs> off. So um, we talk about business evolution and I, I, you know, what are the signs obviously that it was time to change in your business? And you talked about that as in, as in COVID, but how has your business evolved before that? Because there's all those startup years that you go through. How long have you been in business? Uh, over 15 years now. Uh, yeah, I think it was 2004, 2005. I went and bought my EBN and really started. And back in the day, I was a wedding photographer. <laughs> so I basically, um, you know, got my skills photographing weddings for 10 years, which I absolutely loved. Um, and look, prior to that, I'm, I'm not someone who was born with you know, an instinct to take images or I didn't have a granddad that handed down his box brownie to me. You know, you read all those stories all the time. We don't have that rags to riches entrepreneur (laughs) story. We've just done that. I just decided to start a business. I I mean, I did seven years in corporate and I just always knew I, I mean, I had parents that had their own small business and I think I just always knew I wanted to have my own business regardless of what it was. Maybe it's about being stubborn and independent. I think it's just, I think it's personality based in some respects. Yeah. Your own Does business, not play well with others. No, <laughs> <laughs> I like working on my own. Um, so all I knew is that I wanted to do something that I loved and that gave some kind of value to others as well. That was all I had in terms of criteria. And um, it probably wasn't until I was in my early 20s. I was in London doing the two year thing over there and um, went to the National Portrait Gallery and I saw these uh, photographic portraits on the wall and I was just really struck by them. And that's the moment I remember that was a bit of a turning point that made me think I'd love to do that. But um, look, it took me a few years because, um, and I know imposter syndrome is one of those things you talk about, but I wasn't brought up in a family where, um, I mean, I had a fantastic upbringing and, and, you know, was and still am fully loved, but, it wasn't um, a family where you were encouraged to do something creative for a job. It wouldn't have been thought of as a real job. And I think for probably 10 years, my parents weren't really sure. Yeah. How's, how's that hobby going, you know? Yeah. Bless them. <laughs> when are you going to um, get a job, darling? <laughs> yes. but, uh, so I think for, it took me quite a few years to actually take, to find the courage to go for it and become a photographer. Um, and eventually, I think it was a guy I was dating uh, for a few months, gave me a brochure and he was just so sick and tired of me talking. He's like, would you just go and do a short course and then see what happens? And it's kind of the rest is history. I just went on and on from there. But um, even the first, you know, years of my career, I, it was very hard for me to say I'm a photographer without feeling like I was like, <laughs> you know, coughing on my words because it felt I felt like a bit of a fake so that imposter syndrome like it's historically I've, I've you know worked on that and had to work through it but I digress but yeah we so I did weddings for 10 years absolutely loved it but then I had my twins and thought right my lifestyle has to change I can't work weekends anymore weekends of course yes so um and that's again the beauty of running your own business you can change things as you need to I love that flexibility mm. so I had already been doing family portraits for a long time um, so I kept that part of my business and still worked some weekends doing that. Uh, but uh, as I dropped off my weddings over the course of three or four years, I built the branding side of my business. Um, went and found my first little studio space, started doing headshots and personal branding was just starting to get talked about at the time. Yeah, it wasn't a thing, was it? No, no. It's so. weird and it's so key to having your own business and anyone who is a thought leader and positions themselves as you know, either a thought leader or a maverick or an educator or a leader, you've got to have a personal brand, even if you're in a business with yes. someone else or under a brand. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, mm. actually um, someone who I did a little bit of coaching with way back in the early years, Julie Parker, who actually heads up Beautiful You Coaching Academy. Yeah. She said to me, she said, I've just got this feeling, Fee, that women are going to need lots of photos for their business. <laughs> <laughs> like she is really? the most intuitive person. <laughs> And you know what? She nailed it. Yeah. So, you know, she knew. She's like, why don't you just, just promote that a little bit more? But, um, yeah, I mean, the I've always worked mostly with women in business. And um, the reason I love that is because I think I'm simply I'm a woman in business as well. So I think, you know, whether it's imposter syndrome or, you know, um, 
just working on all parts of your business. Uh, I feel like I can relate to everything and mm. I've had to work hard on a lot of things in my own business and um, I just, you know, helping other women also build their own business through obviously personal branding images um, really just resonated with me and I love it. I love it. So yeah. Yeah, so completely that's relate. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I mean, look, it was probably only a year or two ago that I actually removed the family portrait part of my business completely off my website. And one thing I will say is I think sometimes we take too long to do that. To, I mean, I think I'd been niching physically in a sense in my business for years, but to actually do it in a, an online professional marketing manner um, it took me too long. So I think, you know, having the confidence to niche down and do what you really love is, is one thing that I think is really important. And, and embodying that person you are becoming in mm. your brand. Mm. It's really, really hard to let go of the old services and the old hat. You go, oh, well, but this is my bread and butter and it's really scary, yes. but you're not going to make that progress if you're still, you know, living in the past. And, yes. and you're not making space for those new people to come in, are you? Exactly. Yes. That's exactly what I'm doing this week. Oh, are you? Well done. <laughs> thanks. Thanks. <laughs> Big snap. <laughs> well, since I niched, honestly, I mean, I did a lot of personal branding, you know, over the last probably five, eight years now, but, um, you know, the personal branding part of my business has exploded and, you know, I've, it's been just growing in success, which I'm absolutely loving. And I know that that's because I really honed in and I worked on my own personal brand and yeah. so you got to practice what you preach, don't you? you, you say it, <laughs> sister. And, and it's, so, um, it's so empowering to work with someone to create their personal brand, like mm. to, to help them step into that. It's what I do as well, but in, obviously in a different way to how you do it. Yes. Um, and it can transform someone, not just in their business, but you can see, you watch them grow and, and, yeah. and, develop and it's just such a gift isn't it it's so beautiful and I find sometimes I say to people I don't sell images I sell confidence because I find that when my clients get their images back and they love them they have the confidence to market themselves more online because mm -hmm. they've got images and a brand that they're really proud of so I mean that's also you know that's part of my why just seeing that and seeing them you know, take those images and really start to put themselves out there a lot more, which, you know, we all can find quite hard to do. Yeah. But once you've got the tools, um, it does make mm -hmm. it easier. So, um, yeah, absolutely. It, it can absolutely transform them and send them off on a, you know. A, You're a, so proud. Yes. <laughs> I do. I still like when I flip, I said to my husband that I flipped over an Instagram and straight away one of my clients' images came up and I just looked at him and I said, oh, my God. I'm really not. I know that. I love that. I love well, I that. It that. still just fills me up every day. Yeah. yeah. It's like yeah. when I'm flicking and I, I see a logo I design, I go, oh, oh, weird. Yes. Ooh, strange. It's, it's so nice, isn't it? Seeing that that's helping people in business. I love it. Help, yeah. Helping people show up and be the best that they can be. And it's yeah. just amazing. It anyway, is. we could talk about personal branding all day. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you mentioned you had twins. Congratulations. Yep. Thank that must you. That a challenge 11 years ago. Um, <laughs> You don't sit down for three years, I reckon. Oh, I can't imagine. I can't imagine. <laughs> but once you get over three years, I say to people, it's um, efficiencies. Everything's uh, at the same time. Like, so I look at people with two or three kids of different ages, you know, and I'm like, oh, that's hard. <laughs> that's even more of a juggle. <laughs> oh, yeah, mine are, mine are three and a half years apart. And I'm just starting to see the light at the end of the tunnel. My six-year-old can, like, dress himself and, mm. you know, get a bowl of cereal if he's really pushed and get a cup of water and... That independence is it's yeah yep it's so, amazing isn't it it's I'm really to feel it and my kids uh they go to high school next year and they're going to be able to walk to school and i just like i feel like like that's going to be a bigger milestone than my 50th i think because you know just think about the ways that opens up your life when your kids can walk to and from school i'm like that's incredible so i'm just counting down the days until they start year seven. i wish that you actually know that well this year is like hurry up let us travel again. Um, oh, no. But we're, yes, we're dig digressing again. Um, how do you manage your life then as an entrepreneur? And I know how hard it is with kids. And obviously you've had your business since before you had kids. Mm. Um, efficiencies, apparently. Well, 
as much as possible. Look, I'm not an expert at it. I don't think, well, there are probably some people that do it very well. I'm, you know, I do a lot of working late at night, so I'm going to be transparent about that. But yeah. um, I suppose I've never minded, and I'm more of a night person than a morning person. So instead of getting up at 6am and doing a couple of hours of my business before work, I tend to be more still the other end of the day, which I'm, I'd love to flip it, but I don't know if that's ever going to be possible for me. Um, but I think, I think typically self-care is probably the area where I am still working on. Yeah. Um, and I, um, I actually got diagnosed with breast cancer last year. I don't know if you oh saw my gosh. that. Oh my gosh. Middle of COVID, um, very like totally out of the blue. I was actually sailing along fine thinking, yep, COVID's okay. I'm managing. And then bam, I got this, you know, big sort of hammer. <laughs> and look, I'm actually a really good news story. I caught it very early. I managed to get into surgery in August and, um, you know, got a fantastic result from that. So I am oh, a, wow. very, very much a good news story. So women, check your tits. Yeah. <laughs> your Feel your boobies. Feel your boobs. Check them regularly. Um, I didn't. Oh, I was just lucky I found it. Um, but that really, I think I had taken my health for granted for many years because I have always had very good general fitness, but I haven't actively gone out and done things. And I think that's really hard when you have kids and you're not a morning person and you're tired in the evenings. Um, so I'm still working on that. And that's probably, you know, COVID and, and that happening has also nudged me into action to really work on my health more this year. And I think that's really important as women in business because we put ourselves last. We do. Um, and, and as mothers, we do have a tendency just as mothers we're the default oh, last person absolutely absolutely um wow. and look one one tip i will give though and i know we talk about we talk about batching a lot in business you know batch your content batch your social media i batch my housework so one thing i do is i do all my laundry on a saturday <laughs> And my husband and I, we sit down and we meal plan and do online shopping, grocery shopping on usually a Saturday or a Sunday as well. And I find that takes a lot of my um, thinking out of the week. Like I don't mental load, isn't clothes. it? Clothes. It's the mental load. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's always still plenty of mental load to fill those gaps. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Um, but I find I try and batch a lot of stuff at home, which leaves me free to yeah think about all the all the other things I have to do. Um, and I look, I'm lucky. I have a partner who's great. He does a lot of cooking. Um, he helps out. He does half the housework as well. Like he's, we are incredibly supportive to each other. He also has his own business, but I know also a lot of women do most of the load themselves still. And I think, you know, that's slowly going to change as we, you know, as generations move on. But, um, I think, you know, just helping yourself as much as possible, you know, supporting yourself through putting those systems in place at home systems. is really good and outsource, outsource if you can. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm on that tipping point now. I've just, I've just got to let that go mm. and mm. outsource. And I just, people are like, how do you even run a business without a VA? And I'm like, it's just all in my head. And that's what yes. scares me. <laughs> yes. No, I'm, I'm the same. And I actually um, just chatted to a couple of VAs last week to get some additional support because I think you're right. Like I had it all in my head and it's like, well, even if I can do it, do I actually want to do it? Is this the work I should be doing? Mm. You know, we got to focus on the work that's going to really build our business and also the work we love. Like, you know, yeah. if, you do, if you don't love, just give that to someone else. And <clears throat> <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Um, but I think, again, it's one of those things we can sit on for way too long because of the fear of, you know, the cash flow and, you know, can I afford it? But, um, and look, I have outsourced a lot of things in my business for years now. I do um, outsource my bookkeeping and editing and retouching and different things. And I have used VAs over the course of the years. But um, I think, you know, if people are feeling like they're just, you know, burning the candle at both ends and doing everything. And you've got, you know, a hundred things in your mental list every minute of the day. It's mm. time to look at getting some help and, you know, you can start small, can't you? You can just, just outsource that one thing. Yeah. Yes. And, and that's, that can just be the, the set you free thing. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, I um, just think that you, as, as women in, in business, we need to focus on, where is it that we want to spend time in our business? And, mm. and we're so, especially because it's a, it's sort of a hangover from when you're in startup and you're so used to doing it for yourself that as your business evolves, you, you forget that you don't need to do yeah. everything anymore. And Absolutely. 
and spend yes. more time. You know, you think, oh, I wish I could spend more time doing one-on-one -on -one with my clients. Well, make that space in your business. Yeah, yeah. To, I think sometimes we feel like we've also got to work hard to earn the money sometimes. I think I've been thinking about that myself over the last month or so, thinking it's just my mentality. Like I feel yeah. like I've just got to work really hard and maybe I don't have to work really hard. No, we maybe, don't. Maybe, Earning money doesn't have to be hard. We don't no. have to work hard to do it. Yes, but I think there is that belief around small business, isn't there? Um, you know, maybe for women as well. Maybe it's a female thing. I don't know. But I think we feel like we have to work really hard to be worthwhile. Yeah. And that's, yeah. you know, I'm, so I'm working on that belief at the moment. If anyone's got any tips, send them to me. <laughs> Actually, um, Denise Duffield Thomas, you know DDT? Yeah. Well, I wasn't going to mention it, but I've just joined boot camp, which is oh, why I'm correct. thinking about all that's of this. That's why you're in the money yes. mindset place. <laughs> Yeah. I haven't thrown myself into the content yet, but I've been following Denise for years and my beautiful friend, Michelle, up on the Gold Coast does all of her photography. So I'm always, you know, eyeballing her beautiful oh, images. I love her um, colour. And I finally this year went, I'm going to do it. I'm going to so, do it. Joining boot camp. I feel like I'm one of the last women in Australia now to do it because I jumped into the group and there's so many awesome women in there I know already that have been in there before. Oh, so oh, hang on. very excited. Yes. I have not done Denise Duffield Thomas. I work with um, my money coach or money mindset coach is Miriam Castilla, right, okay. who's amazing as well. She's over in South Australia. So yeah, yeah. there are women out there changing the financial yes. mindset of other women. But yeah, you don't need to work hard to make money. It yes. doesn't have to be hard. Mm. You don't have to earn it. Yes. I mean, you have to earn it, but you don't have to yeah. slog to get no. through. Yeah. Which is... I think our generation is the one that's going to, you know, slough off that mindset of we've finally got to the point where we're earning money almost equal to men. Mm. Um, mm. We don't have to prove it anymore. Yeah, absolutely. We don't have to prove our worth anymore. Yeah. And I also want to, having a daughter that's 11, I mean, it's important to role model to both my kids, but in particular... My daughter, I, I don't want a role model that I, you know, that you've got to work really hard and you've got to work every night, you know. Mm. So um, I think it's really important for our kids as well to, yeah, to teach yeah. them by showing them. Can't be what you can't see. Yeah. Telling my kids to get off their devices and here am I working. <laughs> what are you doing, mum, emailing? Shh. I am I'm working. Gonna... I'm not gaming. I'm not in Roblox. <laughs> no, is, I'm not in Roblox. Making us I'm not money. In Minecraft. I'm not spending money, I'm making money. <laughs> well, my daughter made a Roblox, her first ever Roblox world, or whatever it is. She got a thousand views the other day. I'm like, first business. Oh, there you are. Yes. Well, She's... every kid wants to pretty much be a YouTuber these days, don't they? <laughs> my son is six and he has grand plans. I've taught my daughter how to use one of them, screencast o -matic, Yeah. To edit film. She's, she's all over it. Anyway. I'll keep my eye out for them. <laughs> You okay. might be able to retire early. Oh, hopefully. Yeah. Apparently my I'm building we're building a studio in a shed upstairs so I can do film not in a small space in the study. Yep. Um and apparently that's a kid YouTube studio. So all right. Who's <laughs> charging who's charging who rent? <laughs> <laughs> You'll lease the lease it from me. Yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh. Um so what does a great day in the office look like for you? Actually, it's probably not in the office for you, is yeah, it? Yeah, no, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> great day for me is, is out shooting with my clients, absolutely. Like that's when, you know, that's when it all happens. That's when the magic happens. I love that. I mean, I actually do enjoy this part of my work, like sitting at my desk. I think um, this job fulfills both sides of my personalities, that introvert, extrovert. Um, obviously, you know, the, the shooting I love, but it's they're very energetic days and you've got to be on. I've got to yeah. be on for them. They've got to be on for me. Um, so I try and these days, and it's one of the ways I'm trying to, you know, work better to my boundaries and look after myself more. I'm trying to shoot two days a week yeah. so I can give that, you know, all the energy I need to. And then, you know, and then I spend those other days at my desk working on my business or my membership, um, which is really nice, but they're definitely my favorite days for sure. Yeah. For sure. It's, it's, I, it's like, I love, love, love doing one-on-one -on -one with my clients and, you know, an hour or, you know, a half day kickoff session or whatever. But after that, I'm like, there's, there's not, I'm not doing back to back like all day because it's, mm. it's exhausting that, mm. that energy. And I'm an introvert, extrovert as well. Like yeah. Kate Toon calls it ambivert. I think that's the right. Yes. yes um, and both, both in Latin. Anyway, etymology, we talk about that as well. <laughs> um, and I think, yeah, well, you need that recovery time when you've got that introvert oh. side. 
And can I just say, I'm going to be 50 in a few years. And I, oh, just don't have, I just don't have the energy I used to have 10 years ago as well. That bloody aging process it really oh, shits me. Don't tell me that. I'm exhausted already. I turned 40 last year, but I still haven't celebrated because it's lockdown. Oh, you're a young chicken. Yeah. Oh. Are you going to celebrate this year? Well, we were Ooh. going to, but restrictions Hard to are still plan. Yeah, mm. still, still got restrictions. But anyway... Mm-hmm. Draw the COVID. festival out, I say. Keep the festival going. Yeah, it'll, uh, uh, Angus said, well, it might just, Angus, my husband, it might be your 48th at this rate. We don't. <laughs> so I did squeeze a 40th birthday cruise in with my besties at the oh, beginning good. of last year, a year ago. So before the world went nuts. <laughs> COVID. Yeah. Anyway. Um, so you speak about systems and efficiency. What are your favourite productivity tools in your business? Ooh, well, my favourites. I mean, things I've always had since day dot are Dropbox. Mm-hmm. That's really helped me. But I don't know if that would be my most efficient. I think in terms of efficiencies, um, I think everyone should have a, something like a CRM. So, I mean, I've got a one that's specific for my, um, to the photography industry, which, um, you know, it automates all of my so you do have to do some manual work, but it automates a lot of my invoicing and payment reminders um, and shoot reminders, etc. So when I started using that a few years ago, that saved me hours in my business. Mm. Um, and I use Active Campaign to send to um, you know look after my list and nurture them and send out newsletters, which is really easy to use. I only changed over to that last year from Mailchimp. Yeah, me too. And I'm loving it. After Mailchimp, easy went... is it to design in? Oh. <gasps> love with it so good um what else what else what else um oh and a social media schedules scheduler is always good so yeah. i've just recently gone over to plan from another one which and i'm loving that mm. i and use plan for my hashtags okay. saving them but i use later to schedule oh, what's why would you okay tell me what's good about later i don't know um well later you can add the first comment and you can yes mm. co- and you can post to facebook and something else. I think Pinterest I've got on there as well. But I just, I don't know, different interfaces work with different brains. It's funny, isn't it? And there's always one thing missing from every, every, every single option. <laughs> and plan, I, the, the, there was a period there where plan where the um, app went really oh, okay. hinky yeah. and I just got really frustrated with yeah. it. Yeah, so, yeah. But anyway. whatever you choose, you should have some kind of scheduler if you're a social media person to help oh, yeah. with batching. And my last one would be outsourcing. Yeah. <laughs> outsourcing is my number one tool. <laughs> For efficiencies, yes. <laughs> Absolutely. And, and it doesn't need to be, people get quite scared around um, outsourcing. Mm. And it doesn't need to be a big thing. It can just no. be, you know, I want to write about this, this and this write it you know write my social media captions or yeah. find my hashtags or yeah you know. and I think uh you got to also expect that it might take trial and error a little bit like you know it took me years to find an editor that was really good and mm. you know took on board the feedback and turned around things in the time I wanted them to and um and then last year I found um someone to help with some of my editing on Upwork which totally like you know it's sometimes on there i think you know it takes you know it's hit very hit and miss but mm. found an amazing woman on the other side of the world so i support her business and she supports mine and um but sometimes it takes a few goes you so, guys and and you can't expect someone you outsource to to work the same way you do mm, mm. and i think there's that expectation that they're going to be identical and they're not it's not how yeah. it works i mean i've got a brilliant developer that i work with who's actually in melbourne um from upwork because I had a very specific problem, a very narrow, you know, um, problem within development, website development. Yep. And he fit the bill. He did the yeah. job. He was amazing. And I'm like, right. He's like, what else can we work on together? Because this is great. <laughs> I'm like, I don't know. Let's find some work to do. <laughs> so we now, you know, we can go back and forth. And because I'm a designer as well, he can get me to do design stuff and I get him to do the dev stuff. It's great. It's good mm. fun. And I have yeah. like a little business partner I can talk That's to great. about geeky things. Yeah. It's like building your team, isn't it? Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Oh, that's great. And you've just yeah. got to be able to trust people. You do. You do. It's hard after yeah. working alone for so long. <laughs> well, even just giving things up, you know, I mean, if you've got perfectionist tendencies, which sometimes we have as bit. well, just, you know, letting things go a little bit and, 
you know, allowing someone else to do the work and knowing mm -hmm. it might not be perfect or it might not be easy to do it. But you know what? It's fine. If you haven't got your clients or anyone, you know, emailing you saying what's going on. What's, what's happened fine. here? You've it's added fine. an extra leg. Yes. <laughs> if that can get through in vogue. It... <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Gosh. Uh, let's not talk about Photoshop <laughs> fails. Um, <laughs> we talked on this earlier. I talk, touched on this earlier. So one of the things that affects every single entrepreneur I know is imposter syndrome. So what are your methods to overcome this and how do you <laughs> respond to the bad days in business? And that is like the question I ask in every single pod. Oh, yeah. It's a good question because we do all suffer from it. Um, look, there's a few things I have learned to do over the years. And I think it's one thing is learning that it's never going to go away. So you have to just gain some tools to work on it. Um, so I think one thing I've learned to do is forgive myself and just, you know, give myself some grace. And if it's a bad day or if I feel like it's a bit shit, whatever, I just, um, I don't stress about it too much anymore. I let it go. Um, that I'm never going to be perfect anyway, that I'm, you know, remind myself that we're all good enough <laughs> to be yeah. doing what we're doing. Um, but I also think it's really important to talk about your imposter syndrome and share your stories with others because um, we actually had someone uh, present to my members in Shine yesterday and Cass Goodman, she's just written a book called Self Fidelity and it was about, she focused on one area which was flipping the lenses. So, you know, when you tell yourself a story in your head about, you know, um, whether it's your lack of worth or, you know, something you're, you think you're not very good at. Um, you know, she showed us this exercise where you just kind of have to flip the lenses and reframe that. So I think you've got to continually work at trying to reframe those thoughts in your head and listening to the voice, but then telling it to bugger off. Yeah. <laughs> Shush you. Go away. Um, and I think really practical things like just go back and read your testimonials. Like read oh, that. I love doing that, that. Feedback that your clients keep them all you. in I mean, a folder or a yes. one word document and then just read that. And I think, you know, people, well, obviously people never judge us the way we judge ourselves, but you just, I'm always saying to my clients, because often, you know, getting people in front of a camera, it's something that almost every woman I speak to, oh, I hate having my photo taken. So I live that story every day with my clients. And it's just like, stop thinking about yourself. Yeah. Focus on your clients. Because every time we think about ourselves and, and that, it, that imposter syndrome take over, it stops us doing what we love to do and that's me that means that our clients or someone out there is not getting the opportunity to find you mm. so stop thinking about yourself and focus on your clients and hopefully that sort of removes some of those um thoughts as well but yeah, some of the things i think about and do yeah it's it's about i mean for your clients especially uh you know that vulnerability is is really what it's it's about being out there and 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 putting yourself out there is, is mm. feeling vulnerable. You feel yeah. vulnerable to, to criticism or judgment or whatever. But most of the time that's in your head. Yeah. Yeah. But it's yeah. really hard. Absolutely. Absolutely. It's hard habit to break. It is. And I think it's something you always have to work on. It, it never, it just doesn't go away, does it? But um, no. I think you can get better. And I think I've gotten a lot better over the years with dealing with it. Like, yeah, as I said, in the early days as a photographer, I just even saying I was a photographer, I was like, oh my God, what are you, oh you know, who, who are you to say you're a photographer, you know? Uh, yeah. So it's taken years of work to, um, to get over that hump. But um, I feel like these days I'm much better with it but yeah. yeah everyone still has their bad days you know even people at the top of their game you know oprah winfrey will say she suffers from it you know we just gotta yeah. it seems really simple but we just have to keep reminding ourselves that it's actually you know it's it's they're just not good thoughts they're just no. wrong, no. <laughs> they're wrong. it's just yeah it's it's really it's a really difficult habit but yeah every day we work on it so yeah. you've obviously got your membership um how else do you or or how within that do you maintain your sense of community because obviously working alone we can i get quite isolated yep yep um well obviously yeah shine is a great community and it's, it's mostly online as well we have some events but that's been really nice to build around my business um look i think making sure that you are active in different networking circles or coaching groups. Um, and last year I was part of Emma McQueen's Thriving Women and 
that was an incredible community of women. And even though a lot of us aren't continuing this year, we um, are still really tight and we all went down to the prom and went high, about 10 of us anyway, went down to the prom and went hiking um, at the end, at the start of Feb, I think it was, and had a great weekend away. It was just a few weeks ago. Um, yeah, actually, I'm going in lockdown. four weeks, very yeah. Happy. Yeah, so beautiful. So, so that's great. Um, and uh, so I think that's really important, whether it's, you know, a, an organised coaching group or something else, I think making sure you, you know, even if it's saying, yeah, okay, one thing every month I'm going to go and join and, and meet some people, I think that's really nice. Um, and I'm, I'm a big phone person. When I'm in the car, if I'm commuting in and out um, to shoots or the studio, I try and um, keep in touch with people, pick up the phone and... Yeah, on a more personal level, probably just trying to keep yeah. in touch with some friends and and some of my gorgeous clients. Um, yeah, I'm probably a bit of an introvert at home. I don't have a massive social life anymore, so I find my <laughs> no, work cool, having children. Yes, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> it's all going to change next year. Remember, it's all going to yeah, change. Yeah, freedom. They'll get home. Where's mum? Don't know. She's out. Uh, exactly. <laughs> uh. So, um, we. What's your Number one, why? What keeps you motivated? And we talked about how you love to work with your clients. And yep, I would say that is helping women uh, fulfil their potential in their business. And uh, yeah, because obviously, what I do with my branding is I basically create images for them. But I think the the flow on from that is that it helps them grow their business and do what they love and and put themselves out there and talk about what they do and, you know, and then as a result of that, they're sort of doing what they love and fulfilling their potential. So I think one of my big values is growth. Um, I'm always trying to do self growth through whether it's, you know, improving my skills at work or something more personal. But I think um, I like to think that I help my clients grow as well through how I work with them. Even and then as- they in turn help more people. Yes, exactly. Impact the world. Yes. Change the world. Here we are yeah. showing up. I love that. I think when we're doing what we love, we're just happy, aren't we? Like yeah. that's, we're happy. Yeah, yeah. In my happy place. And, and yeah. it's funny because um, I have, I mentioned to you earlier, I always take Mondays off. And then I was like, oh, I should be working. And then if I do come in and do a couple of hours of work, I'm like, oh, so happy now. And it's yeah. like, yay. I'm like in my happy place. And it's like, yeah, absolutely. I just, I just, it's, you know, amp. I see my role, and, and it's similar to what you do, is amplifying mm. the the impact that my clients have on the world. You know, yeah. the more we can help them be out there and get more clients, the more, you know, that exponential effect of what they do and how Absolutely. they help their clients. The world needs more people, and more women doing what they love. Mm, mm. Yeah, and we still get to remain behind the scenes and not have to be particularly visible. Um, <laughs> I'll wash your mouth out. <laughs> I'm such a, I'm just behind the scenes. I, I, but, you know, we're here, we're doing this. This is video. This is podcasting. That's true. That's true. We're putting ourselves out there. No, I see you on social media showing up. Oh, I try. Oh, gosh. Anyway, my COVID lockdown photo shoot with my husband. Anyway, <laughs> uh, don't charge the photos on my website. One day I'm going to go and see Fee. I'm going to get new photos. Um, <laughs> so what are your tips for all the smart women in business across Australia and the world? Because oh, we have a global gosh, And audience. the world too, really? And the world, yeah. Well, okay. So my two top tips are make sure you have amazing images of yourself <laughs> and work on your personal brand. <laughs> because I think these days, uh, and again, as a result of last year, um, it is more important than ever to have a strong visual brand so you can stand out online. Like, you know, with everyone pivoting, I mean, it was, it was, you know, it was competitive before COVID. So Mm. now since COVID with people pivoting, I find that online marketplace is just even noisier than ever before. So I think, you know, working on your personal brand and and building your business through that, like it's the, it's the one asset asset we all have where, you know, there's a lot of other branding photographers out there, but none of them have the personal brand I have. Mm. And that's my way to show my uniqueness and to connect with my audience and, I think it's just the one asset, asset. I can't say that word, can I? Is that one <laughs> asset? Maybe I just want to say ass. Just get it out there. <laughs> it's the one asset 
that uh, we've all got that is unique. So yeah. I think, um, and it is about connection these days. It's not just about how good you are at what you do. You, whether it's fortunately or unfortunately, you have to show up and you have to connect with people because that's how people are making decisions these days. Exactly. Um, yeah. So I would say um, those two and outsource when you can. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. And, and you're so right because people are making it, and I talk about this a lot making genuine human connections mm. is how people are making purchasing decisions now mm. it's not oh that person's the best on price or that person's you know look at how beautiful that is they go I want to have a really good relationship with this person yeah and in what you do and what I do you know it can be a process and you can feel vulnerable and yeah feeling like that person's got your back is so important mm. Mm. And it's really nice that people are, you know, thinking more about their decision making, isn't it? Really yeah. nice. Yeah. Even if it makes us sort of think and work harder on, you know, what, what our why is and what our principles and values are. I think it's, it's great that the world is moving in that direction and people yeah. are, you know, connecting more. So, mm. Yeah. It's a, it's a brave new world. It is. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so how can listeners find out more about you and your work, Fee, apart from on Instagram? Uh -huh. Well, I am pretty easy to find because I am pretty much Femins Photography everywhere. So femimsphotography.com.au and it's M-I-1-M-S. I often get the double M's in there. I will link, I will link it. Femims, uh, Femims Photography on Instagram, Femims or Femims Photography on LinkedIn and the same on Facebook. So yeah, come visit. Come, come visit, and come, go somewhere. and have a look at Fee's beautiful photos. They're lovely. <laughs> So I'll do all of that link, uh, all the links in the show notes and people can obviously find out about your membership at your website. Yes, they'll be able to find that on the website too. Awesome. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for chatting to me today, Fee. Oh, I really it's really fun, it. Jay. Really yeah. fun. All right. Well, we'll um, have to do this off, off air one day soon. Yeah, one day. With champagne. <laughs> With champagne. Now you're talking. Now you're talking. <laughs> Thanks, Fee. <laughs>